Hello and thank you for joining me today in this Scottish Summit Virtual Edition. My name is João Ferreira and I will speak a little bit about how you can extend Microsoft Teams with custom apps. So before we jump into the session, I want to give a huge kudos to all the sponsors that are making this event a possibility. Even remotely, we have a huge list of sponsors that are making this possible. So on today's agenda, the first thing that we will see is how you can extend Microsoft Teams using app templates. Then we will see how the Power Platform can be used to create your own apps and workflows inside of the Microsoft Teams ecosystem. And last but not least, we will have a look into the SharePoint framework development process and the native development process and show you how both combine allow you to extend Microsoft Teams as well. So before we jump into the details of the session a little bit about myself, my name is João Ferreira. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the office development category and recently also awarded as Windows Insider MVP. I've been working with Microsoft technologies for over the last eight, nine years. I started with SharePoint and moved to Microsoft Teams since it was first released. I wrote a book about Microsoft Teams. It's this one in he over here, it's called Hands on Microsoft Teams, and I'm also the owner of a handful of uh, blogs about Microsoft technologies. Two of them are the Hands on SharePoint and Hands on Teams.net. If you want to read about these topics, have a look to those blogs. All right, so in case you don't know yet what Microsoft Teams is, here is a brief description. So Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork on Microsoft 365, is the fastest growing business app ever released. It grows more than Windows ever did in the entire history of Microsoft. And some say that this could well be the replacement for the operating systems as we know them today as people basically don't need to leave Microsoft Teams because more and more you can put all the apps and workflows and things that people in reality need to do their daily tasks inside of Microsoft Teams. All right, why Microsoft Teams? I have these two numbers crossed in here and those were the milestones that we saw teams crashing last year so it started with 44 million daily active users then it jumped into 77 then the last time the numbers were communicated was 115 million daily active users and i'm pretty sure these numbers are way higher today than they were in December 2020. So obviously the pandemic situation helped a lot with everyone working remotely. Teams is giving a huge help to put the economy to work and to help people to continue to be able to do its, their daily tasks while working remotely. And here's a, a, a funny um, quote about Microsoft Teams from um, Jeff Tipper and basically he says that these building blocks all together will making the, the Microsoft Teams the hub of single communication and obviously it's powered by all the other Microsoft platforms that combined create this rich ecosystem that we will see right now. Okay. So how to extend Microsoft Teams? And this graphic represents three different ways of extending Teams. And the first one um, is the App Store. This is pretty similar to everything we see 
on our phones, either Android or iOS, or even Windows, all these uh, operating systems have a store. Same thing happens in Teams. So you just need to go there. There's around 800 apps right now. So just go there, search for the app that you want to install. If you have permissions, you just have to press the install button and that's it. It's the last effort um, that you will that you will uh, spend to customize Teams, but the app might not suit all your needs if you have complex business uh, logics and processes that you want to include inside of Microsoft Teams. Then we have the App Studio and the templates and Power Platform and the ability to customize the apps in here. It's way higher than in the App Store. They also take more time to deploy and to um, create. And then we have the apps from scratch. And in, the, in here is where we can find the SharePoint framework and the Teams native uh, development um, SDK. So, All right, so let's see first the app templates and what are the app templates. App templates are provided by Microsoft. Uh, I just counted them uh, before this session and currently there are 48 apps available. They are located in here. They are not available in the store. They typically combine more than one type of technology. They, they typically combine the Power Platform with Azure and um, you need to be um, an administrator in, in the, the majority of the templates to be able to deploy them, but they are provided for free and they are uh, monitored and provided by Microsoft. So even though they are not available in the store, Still, they are plug and play experiences and all of them are provided with um, instructions for an easy deployment. So the full catalog of templates, it's available in this URL, aka.ms slash Teams app templates. And there you will find all the information and screenshots about the templates. But I have here two examples and I have two other ones that I want to show you there in the portal. So one of the typical things that you will find in Microsoft Teams are bots. Um, and here you have a bot already built and ready to be customized by you uh, to, to create an HR system where your users will be able to go to Teams and ask questions to the bot. And the bot, the bot will either um, send the users to the right person and put them in, in, in contact or give the answers directly in the Teams uh, context. Another one, and this one is pretty cool, um, especially for people working in SharePoint and using lists and Microsoft lists, and it is the possibility of searching for a list item directly from the um, text uh, box where you type your Teams messages. So if you look here, when you click in the this little S, it brings a window where you can search for the item, select the list, search for the item, and then post an adaptive card inside of the chat. And this way the users will be able to see the item directly or click in the see more and open the item and the SharePoint list or Microsoft lists in the browser, pretty neat. So uh, before we jump into the facts, um, the FAQs, let me just show you how the site where all the templates look like. So in the right side here, you have all the available templates that you can use for Microsoft Teams um, that are available today. Uh, and if you will watch the recording and if you are watching the recording of this session, this number might have increased because I saw this increasing a lot over the last year. So it started with 
12 templates now there are 48 so a lot a lot of things were added in here and then i want to um show you here two quick examples of um two templates that will help you to manage the facilities and um especially with the pandemic so as you can see here it's a building access template pre-built already you can uh, install it it will get uh, all this interface from where you will be able to create a request view your requests view your approvals approve requests to go to the uh, office buildings and stuff like that and then you will also be able to see who um, checked in and who's on the office already or not so this is pretty cool uh, for this pandemic situation we are living right now and then um, there's also a classroom um, dropping again power platform based but already um, packaged and configured so you don't have to um, build these things from scratch despite they are pre-configured and built already you will have access to all the source code those these things are available in github so you can simply download this repo and then modify this according to your needs if needed and um, this way you will be able to put your own business requirements in these templates all right back to the presentation so FAQs about these uh, templates. Are these apps secure? The app templates um, conform with the recommended best practices uh, and they are monitored by Microsoft and they are uh, provided and monitored in the GitHub from Microsoft. What would it take to take these templates and deploy them in my tenants? All the templates are provided with detailed instructions as I mentioned before and you need to ensure that you have the right permissions uh, for most of them and uh, an administrator uh, will be required and not just for teams but for um, other platforms as well like Azure so can everyone deploy these templates I've answered this question already so you will have to if you, if you are not an administrator you will have to go through your um, administrator and and ask the administrator to deploy the template and last and the most um, important question do these apps cost anything the apps do not cost anything but since they are using technology from Microsoft that might require extra licenses or in, in the scenario of Azure incur into Azure consumption you may end up with um, extra charges by using these apps because well if the app um, incurs in Azure consumption you will have to pay for that consumption then you will have to to see in the list uh, in, in the in the app details what is included and how it might affect your um, billing for all the Microsoft subscriptions you currently have. So, if you want to see this in detail, I uh, recommend you to have a look to this video this um, app templates for Microsoft Teams. This QR code takes you directly to the YouTube channel. This is in the Coffee in the Cloud YouTube channel and he's a comprehensive 12 minute review of the um, templates that if you, if you want to deploy them, I really recommend you to have um, a look to them. All right, so the next thing that allows you to extend Microsoft Teams and bring your own apps to the Teams context is the Power Platform. And the Power Platform is, um, as we are speaking right now, uh, built by these four different blocks. We have Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents. Power BI, um, it's for business analytics, Power Apps, and this is one of the components of the, the Power Platform that allows you to build more things for Microsoft Teams. And 
it's dedicated to application development. Power Automate, it's also pretty neat and allows you to extend Microsoft Teams and bring your own workflows into the Microsoft Teams ecosystem and the Power Virtual Agents, a bot builder for a um, variety of systems and Teams it's included and with just a handful of clicks you will be able to get your bot inside of Microsoft Teams uh, without writing a single line of code. But let's see how these things work. So for the Power Apps, a low code approach to build apps. This is not new. Power Apps have been around for uh, quite a few years now. You are able to build awesome apps with uh, Power Apps using the interfaces and the uh, connections to external data sources that are built in in the application. So without being a developer, you will be able to achieve things like what you see in this um, screenshot in here. So Power Apps and uh, Teams Opportunity. So. Power Apps is available for a lot of time now and Teams um, as well. And you might have apps that exist just in the uh, Power Apps ecosystem and you might have your users using them in the mobile phones or through the browser. Now it's the time for you to bring them to Microsoft Teams if you want to, because everything Power Apps related is just a few clicks away of Microsoft Teams. So two examples here, education, um, the Tacoma Public Schools, a teacher was able to create this um, app that you see here in the screen to help the students in the, the development of the um, readings in her classes and the American Red Cross um, also brought the, the supply hub to Microsoft Teams through a Power App without the need to develop a custom and dedicated app. So, benefits of having a Power App inside of Teams and this is important. Every Power App, no matter what type of app, is a Microsoft Teams app. You are able to add your apps as channel tabs. You are able to upload your Power App apps as personal apps that are only available to you if you have the permissions and the policies of your company allow you to do that. Or if you are an administrator, you are able to upload the app to the tenant app catalog so all the users that need to use that app can install it directly from the Microsoft Teams app catalog. So let's quickly see how this looks like. All right, so in here I have Power Apps and I have two apps um, built from the templates, the budget tracker and the, the um, one and that one the budget tracker and a solution uh, for a health um, hub. So jumping here into Microsoft Teams, if I click here in the event budget, my app opens immediately inside of um, a Microsoft Teams app. So also, if I come here to the personal apps and because I'm administrator and I already installed the app um, and I have the app available to be used globally in the tenant. I also acts, I, I'm also able to access the app from the list of personal apps. And um, if I go here to the apps and if I click in the apps for my company, as you can see, I have the budget tracker here as well. So how all of this is added then to Microsoft Teams from the Power Automate. So one way of doing it, it's by adding the Power Apps application. This will show you all the apps you have 
in the um, Power Apps and you just have to select it, save it, and that's it. Um, easy. This will add the app through the Power Apps app to one team or um, a channel. So, second and third methods require a few more clicks, but they are not um, difficult at all. So, from here, clicking the three dots and then clicking the add to teams and click in the download app it will generate the zip package this zip package contains just the manifest of the app and two icons inside of it uh, we can open it here so you can see it this is the manifest it is this is the app um, itself this is what connects uh, the power platform to the the app and these are the icons so even if you want them to modify the icons before uploading it to microsoft teams you would be able uh, by changing these two uh, files in here so once you get the package then um, if you have the right permissions you just need to submit an app to the catalog or upload a customized app for you and your teams or if you are an administrator for the global app catalog and this way users will be able either to add the app directly to a tab or add the app as a personal app and don't need to go through the power app apps to then make the connection to the app um, directly so pretty simple to use the most difficult thing here will be always build the app in the power apps but once that's done um, there's no reason for not using it in here okay back to the presentation power automate power automate is the uh, part of the power platform that allows you to bring your workflows to the uh, microsoft teams it doesn't matter if the the workflows and the data is stored in teams or not you can use one of the available connectors the i think this number it's pretty outdated uh 230 pre-built connectors um, and also the possibility to use custom connectors give you endless possibilities to extend um, microsoft teams functionalities and workflows using the um, power automate all right so this is uh one thing that you will find about power automate inside of microsoft teams power automate it's available as an app itself inside of teams and from there you will be able to see your own flows and see your approvals um and um this is pretty much the same thing that you will find in the browser when you access to power automate there's also a bot uh, for Flow, um, for Power Automate. Sorry, Flow, it's the old name of, of Power Automate in case you don't know it. And there's still places where this application was not renamed and Teams is uh, one, one of those um, places. So there's also a bot that you can use to learn more about the, the application inside of Microsoft Teams. And here is a list of triggers and actions that are available for you to use. This is not the, the updated list, um, but two triggers that you can use are when a new message is added to a channel or when a user is mentioned in a message in a particular channel. And we will um, see the other ones in a minute. And then there's also the actions, create a channel, post a message, list teams or, or, or channels and all of these things can be then combined with other uh, platforms and better um, to, to see how this works in action than explaining it let me um, go back here to the browser where I have and I can close the power apps I have power um, automate here open and i have basically a flow that every time 
someone goes to this announcements list in SharePoint that no one these days visit anymore, it posts a message directly in a team channel and it does it using an adaptive card that it's something that is supported by Microsoft Teams and this way you don't need to um, try to format the message or end up with a message that it's not properly formatted and the user will not read the information properly from the message. So let's see how this works. I will create here Right. don't need to define the expiration date and now in a few seconds this flow uh, will run and it will be executed so let's just give it a few seconds and it's running and now let's go back here and in the general we have our adaptive card with information that was created in the list. So we have the title, we have the body of the announcement, and then we have the user that did the post and that was me. So all this information came from um, a SharePoint list directly into the uh, Teams chat. And it came in this beautiful format. Well, this isn't difficult at all uh, to build. The adaptive cards are available in this. Let me quickly open it here. In this designer adaptive card. So from here, you will be able to build your card, see how it looks like in here, and then it generates this JSON file. And the only thing you have to do then in, in the uh, Power Automate is to change the variables by the columns that come from the uh, connector. So like in here, I have the title, that, that it's the title that it's in the list, um, and all the other properties are also defined in here. So pretty simple to use. Um, let's see now what are the actions that are available today for Microsoft Teams from Microsoft Flow. So I will quickly create here an action and type Teams. So there are a few, if not all, that are in preview, but this doesn't mean that you can't use them. So they will work. Uh, I've been using them for quite a, quite a long time and I never had um, issues with, with um, these things that are in preview. And if for some reason one of your flows fails, you will be notified by email so you can come to the flow, see what happened and then change uh, whatever needs to be changed related with the Teams connector. So you have five different triggers. Uh, you have a trigger for when a new uh, team member is added. If you want to um, send an email or explain the member how the team is organized or how he should collaborate in the team after he, he was added, um, this is a perfect action, uh, a perfect trigger to do that. Um, when a new team member is removed, if you need to, to, to be notified as well. Uh, for a selected message, when I mention in um, channel message, when a new channel message is added. So all of these five things are available as um, triggers. And then we have the action. So we can list teams, we can create a team, we can post an adaptive card and that what that's what um, we saw get a team, create team, add teams, team members to a team. Um, so the list goes on, uh, it goes, and it's also extended then to shifts inside of Microsoft Teams. If you use shifts in Teams, uh, it's also available in here. So gives you total flexibility to bring whatever processes you have these days to 
flow and to um, create the automation that is needed to see teams becoming the central hub in your organization as well. All right, back to the presentation. Last but not least, we have um, SharePoint and SharePoint Framework and the native Microsoft Teams development. So Teams in reality love SharePoint and vice versa. So one platform, um, Teams as a platform does not exist without SharePoint. SharePoint is uh, one of the bottom layers of Microsoft Teams and is where um, the files um, are stored and it's also where the logic for the um, channels and for the Teams is built on. So they share the platform architecture. There are endless integration possibilities with uh, default SharePoint apps for uh, lists and pages and for uh, Microsoft lists these days. So the sky is the limit in terms of things that you can integrate. The files are stored, the files you share in Teams are stored in SharePoint. The news you create in SharePoint, you can share them to Teams and the rich landing pages and the home sites that you create in the, the SharePoint, you can surface them in Microsoft Teams as well. And as I said, um, Microsoft lists also. So where SharePoint framework um, becomes important here is when you want to create rich and tailored applications from scratch to the Teams platform. SharePoint Framework became as a modern development process to extend um, SharePoint uh, when the modern SharePoint was released back in 2016. In, and since then, it expanded to other platforms. One of them is Microsoft Teams. And with the same source code, you are able to target different platforms. And this gives you the possibility to access to lists and files without effort, cloud services. It handles all the plumbing between your application and Microsoft Graph and Azure. And all those things are handled by the application, which makes the development process a lot easier. So common needs that the SharePoint framework um, solves. So for the end user, the, the, the possibility of having the same application in the place they work, it's amazing. So it doesn't matter if the user is doing their daily tasks in the SharePoint site or in Teams. Well, it doesn't matter. The app, it's there, whatever he's working and it behaves and it looks exactly the same and the data that it's being shown to him in SharePoint and in Teams comes from the same data source. For the IT admin, this is also fantastic because it's one less app that it needs to manage and it needs to take care of. So if you install it once and it becomes available in two different locations, that's awesome. And for the developer, Awesome news as well. So you can, as a developer, um, I can tell you that this this allows me to focus in other things and allows me to optimize my time because instead of being building the app twice, I'm basically doing it once and um, distributing it in SharePoint and in Microsoft Teams. So. This is uh, how Microsoft Teams um, apps built with SharePoint Framework are displayed inside of the application. And I have an example to show you. And there's a page that is hosted in SharePoint that basically, and let me just jump in into this slide that explains how it works. This one. Uh, specifically and this page wherepart.aspx hosts your application and it's responsible for 
rendering the um, SharePoint Framework web part, let's say, inside of, of Teams. This page, if you try to access to it from the browser, it, it will not display anything. It's in reality responsible for doing the authentication and displaying the application from SharePoint inside of Teams, giving the Teams context back to the SharePoint application. So all of this also takes advantage of the, the CDNs that are built in and that Microsoft uses a lot to increase the performance of the applications and that come for, for free in these types of um, applications. So let me just get back so to make sure that we understand how things work. Um, all right, so the process start, starts by the deployment of the application in the SharePoint tenant app catalog. So if you will be using um, SharePoint framework, the installation is done in the SharePoint tenant app catalog. Then there's a manifest that, that tells the, the application that um, it runs also in Microsoft Teams and it's added to Teams and it becomes available in the Teams list. And then um, there's the configuration uh, panel that can get information can get information or not from um, if need if it needs the the information to be configured from uh, a SharePoint list and then in here we've seen it already it's where um, the plumbing between SharePoint and Teams is made. All right, so. The installation, the installation, it's pretty straightforward and I will show you um, in a demo rather than uh, showing it in here. And before the end of the session, I really want to show you how one of these apps look like. So I will quickly jump here into the app catalog. I'll go here to the apps for SharePoint. I have a lot of apps here, but there's one specifically, a game that I've developed for Microsoft Teams during the pandemic so people can play with each other even while we working remotely. And with the app deployed for SharePoint, um, I also get the possibility to sync this app two teams. And from here, from the SharePoint, when I click in this button, it syncs um, and sends the app also to the Microsoft Teams app catalog. That's only possible because in the web part um, built with the SharePoint framework, I'm also targeting a Teams uh, tab. And by doing this, the application knows uh, that this code is supposed to run also in Teams. And also by doing this, I get access to the context of Teams like, uh, and I'm able to control things like the theme and adjust my application in, while running inside of Microsoft Teams to the theme that the user has applied. If it is the dark theme, the application will display a set of colors. If it is the default, it will display another. And if it is the contrast, another. So this is all the code you will see in this presentation that it's pretty much reaching the limit. Um, but I will show you how the app looks like. So if I go here to this theme somewhere in here, I should have snake. Yeah, it's here. So and nope, not this one. I'm sorry. I will add another one. All right. So All right, here is the snake game. So as an admin, I'm able to define how many num how many games a user can play uh, each day. I will set it to two. So you will see the number of credits in here. And then there's a leaderboard and um, there's a, a settings um, menu that allows you to define the walls and, and the, the um, speed for the game. And then you can simply play the classic snake game. So I did not develop the game. I, I 
found this in an online tutorial and I ported it to um, SharePoint and to uh, Microsoft Teams and I used SharePoint framework to do that and at the same time I gave you I, I gave it more uh, functionalities like the leaderboard so users will see the scores of each other uh, in the app and they will see who is the leader in the snake game and all this information is stored in SharePoint in a SharePoint list and it's being surfaced inside of um, Microsoft Teams. The app can be also added to a SharePoint page and the behavior will be the same uh, and if the app exists in the same um, site collection and in the same um, team the leaderboard that the user will see will be exactly the same it doesn't matter if it is playing in SharePoint or in um, Microsoft Teams the source of truth lives in SharePoint and it's displaying in, in the two platforms all right so still three minutes to finish um, the session and another thing that I would like to mention is the possibility that Teams gives you to develop um, applications using the native um, development methods for, for Microsoft Teams. And um, if you use one of those apps and if you have it developed for uh, Microsoft Teams um, and you want to surface it in, in SharePoint, you will also be able to do that. It's something that it's not often referenced, but the reality is that a SharePoint framework application, it's a um, Teams application, but a Teams native application can also be a SharePoint web part. And I have here another example to show you. And somewhere in here, I should have a to-dos list. This is a Teams app that was built specifically for Microsoft um, Teams. And in here, I can create a list of to-dos. The cool thing about this is that if I go to this uh, SharePoint site, um, I'm able to see the same app in here and I'm able to create exactly the same or reuse the same list of to-dos and as you can see they are um, shared from here to here and the only thing that you need to do to get a Teams app displayed as a web part inside of SharePoint is to upload the zip file, the manifest file from the, the application into the app catalog and here it is. So I'm selecting the wrong one. This is um, the manifest inside of this file. It's just the, 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 the JSON file and the two icons that we've seen when we saw the, the Power Apps one. Um, and this allows you to behave as an uh, application in SharePoint as well. So before we end up the session, um, I have here this list of top 10 reasons why SharePoint framework in Teams rocks. Um, and uh, if you are thinking about creating an application from scratch, I would say that SharePoint framework is the way to go unless you want to put it today in the Microsoft Teams store. Um, if, you, if, you, if you are building it to, to use internally, um, use SharePoint uh, framework. So you don't need to host um, the application uh, SharePoint provides that as part of the platform with a Teams native development. You need to host the application and handle the security and the authentications and um, all those those things that um, are typically complicated. Um, you can reuse the code in Teams in SharePoint. 
Azure AD single sign-on, it's built in. SharePoint handles all the configuration uh, page. You don't have to worry about the configuration of the tab. Um, you get access to the context where the app is running in Teams, despite it was built with uh, the SharePoint framework. You can easily access to Graph and SharePoint APIs, no need to define custom apps and things like that in Azure. Everything, it's one click away. You can store uh, data in the Office 365 group. Apps, and this is good for administrators, are managed centrally from the same location. And with deep links, you can always pass context and 10, uh, one of the most important SharePoint community. So SharePoint community and Teams community these days are pretty much the same community, but the um, SharePoint community has um, a long tradition of helping people that reach directly to the community. And through the PNP initiative, if you have any question or if you need help with samples or something like that, I'm sure you will find it already available in GitHub. And if not, if you ask for it, someone will help you to build that thing. So with this, we reach to the end of the session. Thank you so much for attending this virtual session. In case you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can send me an email to joanfreire at amazontech.net. You can reach me on Twitter at joan12freire. And if you want to see the content that I post about Teams and SharePoint, have a look to amazonsharepoint.net or amazonteams.net. And from there, you will find the links for the other three blogs about Microsoft technologies as well. So hope you have enjoyed. Wish you all a very awesome event and bye-bye.